Hey, it's time for another Dev Diary talking about Bible It Alone after it's come out and some of the issues they've run into. That's right, the devs of PDX are actively admitting there's been a few problems, and we're going to go through now the things that weren't intended to happen that did end up happening. And PDX have been pretty honest about this too, so let's dig into it. First of all, we get to see Italy. So this is how much Italy was currently being played. See that little tiny slither? And then boom, Italy. And interesting, it comes down really quickly too. I wonder what this top purple one was, because it... It kind of retracted a little bit, then went back to normal. The hell? That has to be Germany, doesn't it? Yeah, the purple is literally Germany. There's no one else it could be. Hoi 4 without Germany, what would that be all about, right? Yes, confirmed. Germany is purple. It's interesting how it retracts and then instantly goes back immediately. Guys, it seems dumb to say this now. However, a uh, German rework, it has to come eventually. With the amount of people playing as Germany, this would be a stupid expansion pack that the Hoi 4 dev teams would ignore. It's just played too much, so too many people will get excited about this. I'm getting excited at the thought of what a reworked German focus would even look like. You would have the balance of power system. You potentially could have militia. You'd have different garrison laws for different regions. Instead of having releasable puppet nations, you would have bonuses for tanks and bonuses for planes. You would have like a special focus for ahistorical stuff like doing a sea lion. And you would actually have a full-blown focus tree for the unholy alliance with USSR. And it would actually work now because it would actually upset everyone else around the world and actually have some negatives to it other than just being a freebie. Oh, comment below, guys, how you think the German rework rework should look like. And by the way, I'm calling it a rework rework because it's already been reworked. So it would be another rework. Times two rework, all the reworks. I make some note here that Ethiopia got played significantly more, but however, most games where play, people play Ethiopia would tend to be very short games. This is frustrating in a way because once you've defeated Italy as Ethiopia, the focuses aren't very exciting for Ethiopia. A lot of the focuses, the ones that build up your industry need to be 35 day focuses. And knowing the last patch, it did modify a few of them, but to be honest with you, I feel like all of them, all the industrial focus for Ethiopia should be 35 days. I know there's a part of Paradox that want to think historical and would this be an accurate representation, but at the end of the day, I lean more back on a computer game here. I want it to be fun. And when I'm sat there as Ethiopia, pressing a button with 25 PP to set, to build electrical lines in the middle of Ethiopia, it feels almost like there should be a focus tree for every nation after the major conflict has ended. I feel like that's the only way they could do a Cold War style standoff after the end of everyone's focus tree. If there was like a separate generic focus tree for everyone in the world that was about de-escalating the world, for instance, that's the only thing I could think of. That's what Ethiopia needs after the war against Italy. It feels like it needs more going on to make you feel more involved. I feel like as well as Ethiopia, you feel like you really pull your weight, potentially in Africa, because you could fight against the Italians in Libya. Then you could be involved in amphibious invasion of Sicily. And then the problem then is that your contribution doesn't get really accurately rewarded. Hoi 4 has been translated into Japanese. Now 2% of all games are now in Japanese. Wow. 64% of players select normal game, 10% play easy, 25% play very easy, 0.74 games play on hard, and 1.1 games are on very hard. Prior to release, 28% of games used to be on very easy and 12% on easy. The community is getting smarter. So here, they admit there's been some dissatisfaction and confusion about certain mechanics. Yeah, I think there's an area where PDX could have done better here. The area I think lacked the most was kind of explanations on, for instance, the news peace conference mechanics just weren't very good. Why didn't they hire me? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But seriously, I think when I first loaded up the peace conference system, I did click around a little bit and I didn't really know what I was actually doing. It would have been really nice to have a dev actually sit down and talk about the mechanics and talk about how a peace conference should work. Because I know it's whenever this content like tutorial style video is created, it's always a content creator. And to be honest with you, in the past when I've done these kind of videos, I've never really fully understood the mechanics. I feel like I'm a bit like I'm reading from a script. And the only people who really understand the mechanics fully are the people who design them. Also, if I want to chip in and say my suggestion, those divisions that can't be deleted and can't be disbanded, can you just have the ability to like sort them somehow, like a button, so I could basically put them into a different division and forget about them? I, maybe it's just me and I like to have control of my divisions, but I like to have the divisions that I've constructed and I've trained and I've made. And these divisions that can't be deleted, disbanded or modified are just so frustrating. Can I just have a button that just says, send them somewhere else? <laughs> yeah, can you do that? PDX, please, I beg of you. Peace conferences have been the most frequent talking point among the community. A hundred percent yes. And the biggest contention among, among the community is creating border gore. The community generally overall hates border gore. If, listen, 
Paradox, if you listen to this. Hi. If you make pretty borders with your peace conferences, they will love you, okay? And this is speaking from someone who's been at the hands of the community for the last six years. Trust me, they have an obsession with border gore. They have an obsession with clean borders and they have an obsession with hating border gore. Listen, I don't care, but they care. So just, just a heads up. Just a heads up. Yeah, genuine bugs. So this is, the, this is the narrative of the community. Genuine bugs, aka behavior we consider not working as designed. So kind of like lo light exploits, I'd imagine. Uh, confusion over the rules in the new system. Uh, disagreement with the direction of the new implementation of the peace conferences. Yeah, a lot of this could be explained by just one of the devs making a video. Whoever in d intendedly designed it, just talking about it a little bit more. Most of the bugs were legitimately due to AI behavior. Yeah, AI were doing one thing. They were changing the government of a nation. They were occupying land. They were puppeting for resources, then regular puppeting. And that resulted in like four different countries that had been released within that said nation. Which, of course, is border guard, and of course, the community hate that. It's one thing we've noted in the latest patches, the smaller patches after Bible of the Bones release, and they have noticed that the AI has got significantly better of creating more pretty borders. These are the commonly occupied conference comments worth mentioning. Occupying, commonly occupied conference comments. Commonly occupied confer conference comments. Say that over and over and over again, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Defeating Maiden Nations remaining alive at the end of the peace conference is not intended to be a normal occurrence. So when you say Hitler controlling the Rhineland at the end of World War II and controlling nothing else is not meant to happen. Border gore from the AI is worse than intended in certain situations, primarily ahistorical PCs, peace conferences, involving multiple different ideologies. This is hard to code for. When I play historical in most games, it's because I'm aware that Sometimes the game it moves in predictable directions. But guys, it, listen, if you're turning historical off and you say, oh, the wall falls apart, that's what's meant to happen. Working is intended. There are so many different paths and all of them seem to result in civil wars as well when you change ideology. So this is another issue, limitations as well. It's quite common that you try to annex a nation and you wouldn't have enough points to actually take that said nation completely, which was oh, my, it's an unbelievably frustrating mechanic. It's sometimes it's impossible to fully annex uh, due to lack of water precipitation is smaller ones. Oh, that's it. it's reference to what's above. Subjects so and minor nations causing trouble, generating more friction. Ah, oh, man, I can't talk about the latest version, but in the pre-release, there was some annoying ones where a puppet would start taking land in the peace conference. And I'm like, hang on a second. You're my puppet. You, you don't get to say what to do. I, I get the say in this. I think it is sometimes confusing in game when you have puppet nations. Like, for instance, when you're at war and, and you ask for land off them and they say no. And I'm like, you're an integrated puppet. You should be allowed to, allowed to say no to this. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, yes. You, unfortunately, you've not contributed enough to the war. I am your master. How can you say? What's contribution? Okay, that's so unbelievably frustrating. On the subject of an air system and plane designer, we're working on some improvements to the flavor elements that were somewhat lost during the translation to the new designer interface, as well as tackling bugs as we see them. There's been a lot of guesswork from the community over the air combat formula. Ooh. Much of which has resulted in discussions. We'll be making sure that the relevant parts of this are more clearly communicated, either in game or what the wiki has for those who want a deeper dive into the numbers. We've released two patches by Blood Alone, which result in many most of the frequent problems. We have a bug fix patches coming in the short future, likely next week. Interesting. As a patch schedule slightly more distant with some more impactful changes. I always love the big patch that comes after an expansion because it usually includes some really cool features uh, that we just get for free. So you can't complain about that, right? In addition to the bug, we are continually practicing our monthly occurring patches throughout Bible Alone cycle. Uh, this is different to what they've ever done before. This is basically saying they're going to patch exploits. That's what that basically says. We will routinely constantly release bug fixes for those exploits. Basically watching my videos. I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it, lads. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And this is the next video. Ooh. Ooh, this one. This is the one you want.